inspiration from devotees like yourself, our community. Um, uh, it's I'm very grateful uh, to be able to serve and contribute to our community in some way. Um, this is an opportunity to meditate on some things that I've learned and share and be accountable for those things. So uh, I think uh, I'll get started. I'll share my screen and uh, we'll read a verse from the Gita and then we'll see what these keys are really about. So uh, let me share my screen. Uh, let me know if you can see it. Okay. Hare Krishna. So we will start with the invocation prayers. <clears throat> Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpatru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So, welcome all the devotees for our Sunday feast, Bhagavad Gita uh, discussion. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to express gratitude to all the devotees for joining uh, on a beautiful Sunday morning. It's still morning. Yes. Uh, it's a really nice day out there, uh, yet devotees are, uh, you know, sitting on their computer systems, laptops, mobiles, and connect, trying to connect with Krishna. And it is such a wonderful thing. So with all your devotees blessings uh, and prayers uh, we will proceed with our discussion so that we can learn something uh, today from the bhagavad gita about the keys uh, to success in bhakti okay so let's read this verse uh, from the 12th chapter of bhagavad gita this is the ninth verse I'll recite the verse, uh, you know, read the synonyms and the translation. And then uh, I'll ask for uh, two volunteers, actually, uh, one per each slide to read out the purport. Atha chittam samadhatum na shakno shimayi sthiram abhyasa yoge na tato maam ichhaptum dhananjaya. Synonyms. Atha, if, therefore, chittam, mind, samadhatum, to fix, na, not, shaknoshi, you are able, mayi, upon me, sthiram, steadily, abhyas yogena, by the practice of devotional service, tataha, then, Mam, me, Ichha, desire, Aptum, to get, Dhananjaya, O winner of wealth, Arjun. Translation My dear Arjun, O winner of wealth, 
if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga in this way develop a desire to attain me um would we need a volunteer here to read the purport here uh, prabhu ji can i read sure okay sure. in this verse two different processes of bhakti yoga are indicated the first applies to one who has actually developed an attachment for krishna the supreme personality of godhead by transcendental love and the other is for one who has not developed an attachment for the supreme person by transcendental love for this second class there are different prescribed rules and regulations one can follow to be ultimately elevated to the stage of attachment to krishna bhakti yoga is the purification of the senses at the present moment in material existence the senses are always impure being engaged in sense gratification but by the practice of bhakti yoga these senses can become purified and in the purified state they come directly in contact with the supreme lord in this material existence i may be engaged in some service to some master but i don't really lovingly serve my master i simply serve to get some money and the master also is not in love he takes service from me and pays me so there is no question of love but for spiritual life one must be elevated to the pure stage of love that stage of love can be achieved by practice of devotional service performed with the present senses thank you prabhu thank you uh, we'll read the second part uh, of the purport anyone Oh, okay. I can read it. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes Prabhu. Okay. This love of God is now in a dormant state in everyone's heart. And there, love of God is manifested in different ways. But it is contaminated by material association. Now the heart has to be purified of the material association. And that dormant natural love for Krishna has to be revived that is the whole process to practice the regulative principles of bhakti yoga one should under guidance of an expert spiritual master follow certain principles one should rise early in the morning take bath enter the temple and offer prayers and chant hare krishna and collect flowers to offer to the deity cook food stuffs to offer to the deity take prasadam and so on there are various rules and regulations which one should follow and one should constantly hear bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam from pure devotees this practice can help anyone rise to the level of love of god and then he is sure of his progress into the spiritual kingdom of god this practice of bhakti yoga under the rules and regulations with the direction of his spiritual master will surely bring one to the stage of love of god thank you prabhu thank you prabhu for reading um, the purport so let's quickly look at the verse my dear arjun o winner of wealth if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga in this way develop a desire to attain me so this is 12th chapter entitled devotional service the lord here is literally talking about bhakti yoga uh, since we are all gathered here um, uh, trying to become sincere practitioners of bhakti yoga uh, this verse is very helpful also the conversation begins with arjuna asking about uh, whether the lord's impersonal form is superior or worshiping the lord's personal form is superior uh, and the lord addresses that worshiping his personal form is uh, the perfect way of worshiping the supreme lord 
and then on he goes to tell arjun how to worship the personal form uh, through bhakti yoga the verse before this was mentioning how you need to fix your mind upon krishna uh, in a, a without any impurities uh, without any uh, ulterior motives um shrimad bhagavatam uh, talks beautifully about what is the best way uh, um, you know to approach bhakti or religion savai pumsam paro dharmo yatho bhaktir adokshaje ahai tuki apratihata yayatma suprasidati it is ahai tuki and apratihata means unmotivated uninterrupted uh, devotional service but right now if we look at that that standard seems way far off at least for me uh, when i when i read that i i feel i know that i'm very 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 far away from that state of mind uh, we have our jobs our work our school our friends family society country what not and our minds are constantly uh, you know bombarded with these things and engaged in thinking about different things throughout the day and we are not at the stage of a pure devotee so this verse here particularly is very hopeful uh, in the sense that krishna is telling that okay if you cannot in an unalloyed way fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga and in this way at least develop a desire to attain me if you are not in the state of a pure devotee uh, at least develop that desire right and shri prabhupada in the purport uh mentions really beautiful points i would i would uh, recommend that uh, take a look at this particular verse in the bhagavad gita and shri prabhupad so simply and beautifully highlights so many points like bhakti yoga is a purification of senses uh and uh, in a purified state of mind you can come in contact with the supreme lord um and shri prabhupad also uh describes briefly what are the principles of bhakti yoga right under the guidance of an expert spiritual master follow certain principles uh, rise early in the morning uh, take bath uh, enter the temple or offer prayers if if you don't have a temple you know offer prayers to the photo you know if you have a photograph somewhere of the lord it's so easy to even pull up a photo on the phone or your computer and you can still offer prayers there and then chant hari krishna that's like the core principle of bhakti yoga for this age right so it's interesting if we look at the um, abrahamic religions uh, christianity or islam uh, the the core principle there one of the core principles is about belief you just have to believe you need to believe jesus christ is your savior you need to believe allah is the supreme lord uh, and he is the only uh, you know savior and in no way that is wrong it's not wrong uh, of course you have to believe but the vedic scriptures are much more detailed um, they ask you to believe they ask you to inquire athato brahma jigyasa and they ask you to act they give you a certain process right uh, like we have heard that we have um, i forget um the three stages sambandh abhideya and prayojan sambandh is the relation abhideya is the process and prayojan is the final result right so in this way we have bhagavad gita is offering great details about how we can actually uh, adopt the principles of bhakti yoga so in that i was thinking of uh, many many things that actually we follow Uh, as principles of bhakti yoga the regulative principles um the thought that i was recently uh, thinking about is that in this age of kali yoga the lord incarnated as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, he is the avatar of the yuga though an, a hidden incarnation he and nityananda prabhu it is mentioned in the scriptures that they took the treasure of pure unalloyed love of god the highest spiritual realization and connection with god and distributed it freely 
amongst the masses. Patra uh, apatra na dekhi, na dekhi sthana sthana. They did not see the place. They did not see the qualification, disqualification of the person. It's like, just here, take this, grab and go. Just chant the holy names. Attain perfection of your life, right? But even though they distributed the, the treasure, to us, this treasure comes out in a box, you know? And this treasure box actually needs, there, there are some keyholes in that. And we need to place some keys in that, right? And uh, the keys, if we place them, the treasure box opens and we can access true spiritual realization, true spirit, spiritual realization that brings in the change in our character, in our existence. And the very things that are mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita is what we will be able to uh, experience in our lives. So what are these keys? These keys are nothing but the principles that the acharyas, the practices that the, the great realized souls have actually done in their lives and shared with us. So that, hey, you know what? I opened this box, here are the keys. You can do the same thing and you can open the box, you can access it. So what are those keys? Um, in our community uh, or in our society of international society for Krishna consciousness, these four principles have been emphasized the most. Um, of course, there are more principles than this, but these sit at the core uh, of the practice of a, you know, of a, of a sadhaka or, a, or, a, or an aspiring bhakti yogi. So the first thing is sadhana. I'll just get done with the animations, let them go. Sangha. Seva and Kripa. So these are the four keys to the treasure box. We all have the treasure box. And trust me, devotees, if we all put in these four keys, we can access the highest form of spiritual realization. Sadhana means spiritual practices, the practices that we inculcate uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, on a regular basis, on a consistent basis. Um, for this age, uh, the, the core principle of sadhana is uh, Harir Nama, chanting the holy names. Uh, we all chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But sadhana, that's, that's the first key that goes in the box. But the second key that goes in the, in the, in the keyhole is the Sangha, is the association of like-minded devotees. Uh, that actually strengthens your determination to practice spiritual life. With sadhana and sangha, there is seva. Seva is the services. You take up various services in the association of devotees. And uh, these services cleanse your heart, cleanse your mind, and allow you to uh, realize your true spiritual potential. Of course, these three keys, they remain in our hands. But the fourth one, comes when Krishna desires. When he is pleased, he gives us the fourth key. And in order to get the fourth key, we have to, over our entire life, keep holding these three keys in position. And once the Lord is pleased, through his mercy, we can access spiritual reality. So in thinking this, I was thinking about the first thing, this has been my meditation uh, for quite some time. Sadhana. Uh, I think we might have just enough time to cover the first key today. Um, and we can, we can go into some details and we can have some discussions, question answers, uh, just on sadhana today. Maybe we can discuss on the other aspects on a later day. Um, so let's talk about sadhana. Um, what is sadhana? So... There is a, this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela. Um, this is a, a purport actually. And um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was talking to Ramanandra and he inquired to him, what is the actual aim of life? It's called Sadhya Sadhana. 
what is the aim sadhya means what for this human form of life we have got this is shalu propad writing uh, right for what do we have this human form of life that is what is the goal of life it's called sadhya what do we want to achieve is called sadhya and sadhana means the activity by which we can attain we can achieve, uh, achieve that goal of life so this was one nice reference where actually shri prabhat directly mentions about sadhya, sadhana uh, in his purports um, so sadhana for us devotees as i mentioned earlier is chanting regularly hari krishna mahamantra um, on the on the beads uh, if possible in the association of devotees and uh, there are certain things that i i was thinking about that are like core principles um, that are important to keep in mind while practicing uh, or while performing sadhana so hmm sadhana based on yoga dharma we have to look at that sometimes we as devotees um because as a community as an organization there are so many things to do we kind of put sadhana in the background and uh, we we kind of uh, you know forget its relevance or importance but we need to remember that the yuga dharma of this age is harir naam eva kevalam is chanting the holy names so remembering the importance the relevance of why we are doing this will actually uh, help us in the way so that we don't get lost or you forget why we are doing things so this is the yuga dharma this is the highest process of god realization for this age as it is mentioned in various scriptures so each yuga has a taraka brahma nama uh, i was actually i heard this for for the first time in gorang prabhu's lecture he was mentioning so this is basically gaur govinda maharaj writes in his book shuddha shuddha naam bhajana the tarak brahma naam is the is the particular mantra that is being chanted in a particular age for spiritual realization like for example i have noted here uh, the tarak brahma naam for for say in the in the dwapar yuga the age before this was hare murare madhu kaita bhare gopal govinda mukund saure yagnesh narayan krishna vishnus nirashrayam mam jagadish raksha and gorang prabhu was jokingly mentioning imagine imagine chanting 16 rounds of that so chaitanya mahaprabhu has been very merciful to us uh, he has given the simplest mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and that is the tarak brahma naam for this age of kali yuga so it it, it is such a simple uh, and easy uh, mantra to perform uh, the other reason why we need to inculcate strong sadhana in our lives is for anartha nivritti um for so many countless years as a spirit soul traveling through this material cosmos we have been accumulating so many impressions in our minds and these impressions have layered one on top of the other shri chaitanya mahaprabhu says in his shikshashtakam prayers cheto darpana marjanam bhav mahadavagni nirvapanam cheto darpana marjanam the chanting of the holy name cleanses the mirror of the mind the mind is compared like a mirror you know what do we use a mirror for to look at ourselves right uh, it serves as a reflection of ourself so similarly the mind is supposed to reflect your true spiritual nature which is sat chit anand eternal full of bliss full of knowledge yet because of associating with the modes of material nature the mirror of the mind becomes dirty and uh, if you look at a dirty mirror it's not really you know possible to see uh, dirty mirrors um i've seen really dirty mirrors because uh, i used to live with 
uh, when I was doing my masters, uh, I was living with my friends and, you know, bachelor boys, hardly concerned about cleanliness and the mirror becomes dirty. It's really hard to look into that. So you have to really crane your neck to look at the, you know, cleanest spot in the mirror and see yourself. Okay. All right. I'm good. I can go out. So the chanting of the holy name is actually cleaning the mirror of the mind, anarthanivritti. And so long as the mind is unclean, uh, it has these different impressions of material enjoyment, we won't be able to see our true spiritual nature. So that's anarthanivritti. And heal and nourish, heal and nourish what? Uh, the creeper of our devotional life. The the desire to perform bhakti is sometimes compared to as a bhakti lata bij, like it's a seed and then it develops into a small creeper. We are all at a creeper stage, at least I am for a fact. And that creeper easily gets damaged because of external circumstances, situations uh, and whatnot. And we need to nourish it. We need to nourish it. If we don't pour water or, you know, like this is winter time and so many devotees, they have Tulsi and in their houses, right? And then it becomes so difficult to take care of Tulsi Maharani in winter times because you have to be careful about how much you're watering. You have to be careful about how much light she is getting and whatnot. And so the basic experience is to grow a creeper. A creeper is so delicate and we have to put in so much care and attention to that. So we have to nourish that, right? Uh, a couple, I think a couple months ago, we were talking about uh, reading, we were reading from the purport of Bhagavad Gita and we were reading how Srila Prabhupada mentions how this creeper grows and grows and grows into the spiritual sky. And it was a, such a beautiful analogy, but if we want that creeper to grow, we need to nourish it. And that is through sadhana. And the most interesting thing that came up to me, uh, like I noticed this uh, in our day-to-day -day lives, like you have to do sadhana anyway. What I mean by that is that you have to our lives as human beings, we are all trying to achieve something, right? If you are a student, you're trying to achieve good grades. Uh, if you are working in a company, you're constantly trying to, you know, um, improve your work um, and, uh, you know, climb up the uh, hierarchy ladder, uh, the corporate ladder. If you're an entertainer, you're constantly focused on entertaining people or a musician or a parent or a businessman, everyone has some form of sadhana. Just as we saw right now, there is sadhya and sadhana. There is a goal and there is a means to achieve that. And we have to constantly make sacrifices uh, and uh, work really hard towards achieving those goals. So as humans, we have to do that anyway. We have to do that anyway. We have to pay the price to get something. We have to work hard. So why not do that for Krishna? You know? So the only reason is that sometimes, and it's a fact, of course, like not many people like, like the work they do. Um, there are many surveys that actually talk about that, that job satisfaction is such a big thing, yet not a lot of people have it. There's a very few percentage of people who have that, right? And the only reason we continue to do those things is because everyone else is doing it. You know, uh, we would be worried if we were the only ones who were made to work hard to get what we need. You know, um, so that's the thing. And so, therefore, we should be convinced about the fact that we actually need to do this sadhana and uh, do it in that way, not just because other one, everyone else is doing it. We should be doing it. Uh, I was, uh, you know, our tendency to follow others is, is so strong uh, and, uh, you know, because everyone else is miserable, I'll, I'm fine being that way, you know, uh, that's, that's our tendency so many times. Um, and uh, we take so much pleasure, you know, like misery loves company, they say. Uh, but I was listening to a lecture by Shamanan Prabhu and he was mentioning uh, that uh, he was looking at a documentary about vaccination in Japan. 
and uh, he was watching how these kid, the small kids were getting vaccinated. So the first kid, he gets his vaccine, he gets an injection in his arm and is all making faces and his arm is tied. And then, you know, once he gets the needle, he's like, he starts to cry and he's crying and crying and crying. And there's these kids, they're all sitting out there uh, watching him cry. Uh, and then uh, he goes out, he's crying and the second kid goes. And then the first one was got his vaccine. He's sitting there, you know, holding his arm and he's all miserable. And, you know, I, I hate this doctor or whatever. Uh, the second one goes, he gets his vaccine and he, the first kid starts observing others who are getting their vaccine. You know? So the second one gets it. The third one gets it. The fourth one gets it. Now he has stopped crying. But by the time fifth or sixth one gets it, he actually starts smiling and laughing and it's like, hey, 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 okay, you know, so it, it, it's our nature here in this material world when, I, you know, we do things because I'm fine suffering when everyone else is suffering, uh, but uh, I'm not fine suffering if I'm the only one suffering, but sadhana is something we have to do it anyway, we have to suffer anyway, uh, but suffer for the right cause, and if you do it in the right spirit, it's not even suffering. Uh, it's actually uh, enjoyable. Uh, so that way. So I like to keep things in an acronym so that we can remember and it's easy to share and understand. So the first thing I was able to think about is that seeing sadhana as not only something that you have to do, but see it as an opportunity to seek shelter. Um, His great Dwarkadish Prabhu was recently giving Bhavatam class. It's beautifully mentioned that there are so many stories in the Srimad Bhagavatam and they are so much about Ashray. Uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam starts with uh, Uttara taking shelter of the Lord, uh, running because a Brahmastra a deadly weapon was released against her and she sought the shelter of the Lord. Even before that, just right before that, Ashwatthama releases the Brahmastra and Arjun seeks the shelter of the Lord because he was so bewildered by the power of the Brahmastra. Queen Kunti, she is seeking Ashray. Uh, she is seeking the shelter of the Lord. So many examples. Uh, Dhruva Maharaj, seeks the shelter of the Lord. Prahalad Maharaj seeks the shelter of the Lord. So the constant theme is Ashray. And if we look at the lives of these devotees, they took shelter in the most difficult and challenging circumstance. In the most difficult and challenging circumstance. That can only happen in, in, in two situations, actually, if, for, for in two ways. Number one is if if you are a pure devotee, you're spontaneously attracted to Krishna. And number two is, if you have practiced it when there was no calamity, only then you can actually perform it when there is a calamity, right? Just like cricketers, they practice in the nets and that's how they go and play the real matches. So uh, if you have, if we practice our spiritual life, if we practice taking shelter of the Lord during peacetime, then we will be able to seek shelter of the Lord uh, in war time, not like a little war, but when challenges and difficulties come in our lives. So that's one thing. The other thing is, as I was mentioning earlier, that being a part of a big organization, doing so many services, so many activities, in addition to our uh, work, in addition to our family responsibilities, social responsibilities and whatnot, we kind of start taking our sadhana a little, little, I wouldn't like to use this word, but sometimes we do it, we take it cheaply. We don't really value it and treasure it for what it is worth. So let's look at this verse, uh, 11th chapter 41, 42. I'll just look, uh, read the translation. The, Christ the Lord is actually showing Arjun his universal form. And Arjun, looking at the universal form, what does he see? He sees faces, hands, legs, mountains, rivers, oceans. He sees the entire existence and it dawns upon Arjun that, oh my God, this is the Supreme Lord right here in front of me. 
and then he says thinking of you as my friend i have rashly addressed you oh krishna oh yadava oh my friend not knowing your glories please forgive whatever i may have done in madness or in love i have dishonored you many times jesting as we relaxed lay on the same bed or sat or ate together sometimes alone and sometimes in friend in front of many friends oh infallible one please excuse me for all of those offenses you know so of course arjuna's statement here is because he he is in the sakyaras he treats the lord as his friend and uh, in arjuna's uh playing with krishna or you know play, playful talking and joking with the lord is at a completely different level but the lesson for us here is that we also take our sadhana and take our spiritual practices sometimes cheaply you know uh, sometimes uh, we are you know chanting on the bed or maybe chanting while driving or not really focusing or maybe sleeping or and so many other mistakes that we make constantly right but we have to sincerely uh, uh, try to seek the shelter of the lord so last week uh, char gopika mata ji was mentioning that this hari krishna mahamata that this is we have krishna's personal mobile number cell phone right and we call out to him you know just dial the number the number is hari krishna mahamantra and we chant it and suppose you call your friend and suppose if we were uh, you know having this zoom call right now and uh, all i was doing is uh, so i have logged into the call and i am all dialed in and you can see me and you can hear me and yet i am all i am doing is playing with my bottle taking my pen thinking about what i want to eat after the class so you know what uh, uh, actually i need to fix this little printer here maybe i'll do this i am pretty sure some of you if not all of you might be annoyed with me but we do that with krishna so many times or all the times so we are so distracted spaced out and that's not going to actually help us that much uh, so that is why sincerity is one of the key words uh, used by shri prabhupad and i've heard it from so many senior devotees uh, who have been practicing spiritual life for many years so we have to take this sincerely and seriously um, <clears throat> i also remembered one point about seriously taking seriously is uh, his great shikshashtakam prabhu uh, says the essence of krishna consciousness the essence of consci- uh, krishna consciousness is seriousness and uh, he said uh, we have to be serious about two things we have to be serious about krishna and we have to be serious about maya that's the that's it boom essence of krishna consciousness be serious about two things you'll be taking you know your life will be you know happy successful so uh that's that's the thing that we have to think about uh take a, take a second or two or a minute or two uh, to meditate on uh, how you can make your efforts more sincere um and uh, we'll proceed to the next point uh which is austerity in order to improve our sadhana or our spiritual life we have to be a little a little not not a lot because krishna consciousness is not the process of uh, yogic gymnastics um, it's more about uh, challenging your own mind uh, and trying to uh, convince it to surrender uh, to the supreme lord so be comfortable being uncomfortable not all the time uh bhakti yoga doesn't call for austerity but however with the way our lives are designed being too comfortable can lead to complacency so take up a small austerity try to rise up early in the morning and maybe chant with devotees maybe do something that your mind is unwilling to do for the improvement of your spiritual life that's basically austerity you know just take a small step not a huge step no one is asking no one to chant 64 rounds a day uh, we have for at least those of us who are initiated we chant 16 rounds of mahamantra on the beads every day uh, if you haven't started chanting maybe starting to chant is an austerity maybe chant one round and that's a that's a small success right there so 
performing a little austerity really boosts your confidence your desire and the uh, you know it, it is a little difficult in the beginning but once you get the momentum it's really nice so take up a little austerity chanting is you know is good for all of us we have we have known we have heard it so also take a moment to think about the austerities and the sacrifices that our parampara has performed so that we get krishna consciousness uh, a couple of weeks ago ram vijay prabhu was mentioning about the austerities that shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur performed chanting hundreds and thousands of names every day for so many years right and then the austerities of shila prabhupad a lone 70 year old man traveling on a cargo ship just coming here all all alone staying with hippies in the bowery and insurmountable challenges and austerities they have performed think of the austerities of of our own respective gurus who are out there fighting every day to share krishna consciousness how much have they sacrificed and how much have austerities have they performed so that we get we get the opportunity to practice spiritual lives if they can perform so many things and so many austerities and sacrifices maybe we can do just a little bit of that just a little bit for their pleasure in that way maybe our sadhana can improve austerity is not a recommended and a mandatory thing in our uh, sampradaya and it's it's not what we do however used in the right way in the right mindset it can be really helpful so that's austerity and uh, to perform austerity we need the determination and detachment um the lord in bhagavad gita 6 chapter 35th verse says asamshayam mahabaho mano durnigraham chalam abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate lord krishna said o mighty armed son of kunti it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind but it is possible by suitable practice and detachment so the mind is always luring us into things that are more enjoyable in at a particular moment that are more pleasurable at a given time however it's not always the best thing for us and in order to shut up the mind we need to use a little detachment right and uh, it was interesting actually i'm trying to recollect an example that i heard in gorang prabhu's class yes um he mentioned the one devotee he asked shila prabhupad shila prabhupad if krishna consciousness is the goal of life why is maya so strong and shila prabhupad replied your purpose is not strong and i was blown away by that answer i was just blown away by that answer it just says so many things in just one sentence that our purpose is not strong so we need to keep our purpose strong with determination and detachment and uh, we also need to look at our sadhana that we have to constantly keep on marching it's a lifetime effort it's not that you pick up your bead bag chant 16 rounds one day or 64 or 192 rounds and then boom we are pure devotees that that just doesn't work it's a lifetime commitment and just as the work of a soldier is never done you know they are constantly guarding the perimeters the boundaries of a nation the work of a sadhaka is at least for myself i say it's never done we have to constantly keep on doing it without losing our enthusiasm and if we can do that then that will be our success so that's determination and detachment 
humility that's another principle that's a key foundation of our uh, spiritual principles um, we have to remember that it's not only our effort that will give us progress um, humility uh, is compared to a gem a jewel uh, or the ornament of a vaishnava right uh recently we had uh, you know so much snow um, you know snowfall um, and the snow was out there in the backyard i saw at least for a day or so and in, in a couple spots it was uh, more than two days uh imagine how much snow must have fallen throughout the entire city right i don't know it was a couple inches three four inches i i saw and knew somewhere it was five inches in college station but and so many of us they have, we have uh, you know houses and then you know especially in places that are really cold people have to shovel out the snow of the driveway so that they can actually take out their cars or the garage can we take a shovel and uh, remove the snow of the entire city on our own it's i don't know someone might try to do it for a world record or something but it's not practical it's not feasible similarly the anarthas that have accumulated in our hearts are can be compared to that the vast amount of snow that has fallen you know and we cannot simply our effort is our effort of our sadhana is just taking a shovel and trying to clear off one side one section in front of our house or in front of our cars or whatever but the snow vanishes or melts away when the sun rises right so similarly the anarthas of our heart they will vanish they will burn vaporize disappear when the sun of the lord's mercy rises in our heart and so that is why even though we perform strong sadhana we should never be really proud about it we should be humble because we know our efforts are not the only thing that is you know causing spiritual progress also just because we saw talked about austerity right before this too many austerities can make the heart hard we start becoming judgmental of others we start sometimes becoming condescending so a vaishnava's heart is in a way very soft because it feels compassion it feels the pain of others a hard heart cannot really have compassion um, and judging mentality the lord does not like it he is not pleased with that because he 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 does not like that anyone offends or thinks ill of his devotees so with that humility we have to practice our sadhana that it is a privilege to actually practice sadhana not that it is actually something that i have achieved but it's a privilege so also to remember that at least for myself i say just a couple years ago i was out there in the world and doing god knows what things that i can cannot even describe on the call this desire to become a devotee was also not mine it was given to me it was shared with me i found it so inspiring that i said i want to practice this i want to take this up so remembering that this is not something that we have created out of our own genius mind you know um, so that will allow us to practice spiritual life smoothly radhisham prabhu in his class uh, was mentioning humility does not come because of bodily consciousness i found that very interesting and he said because we are in this bodily consciousness we are unable to think we are constantly thinking of how everyone is perceiving me um i've got a new car everyone is looking at me i'm nicely shaven and well groomed today maybe everyone is looking at me uh you know i've got a nice big house and everyone will look at my house and that is how he was mentioning it our bodily consciousness completely makes us think think about ourselves and in that consciousness 
we are not able to think of the bhakta vatsalyata of the lord that how the lord is so concerned about each and every individual living soul on this in this world that he is concerned about the progress spiritual progress of each and every living entity and he constantly comes in this material world to remind them of their spiritual nature and bring them back to him and once one remembers the bhakta vatsalyata of the supreme lord who is the creator of this whole cosmos and at the same time remembers that i am such a tiny speck in this existence then one will become humble and then one will actually chant the holy names of the lord in humility so too much bodily consciousness also causes lack of humility and lack of humility and uh, sadhana sincere strict sadhana they don't really go together so that was something i thought would be worth sharing with devotees um and last but not the least humility is the fertile soil a humble heart is the fertile soil in which the seed of bhakti will grow and grow strong roots the roots need to go deep and so if we stay humble we stay grounded if we are not humble the roots come off easily like this so humility that is why it is so important the next one is uh, acceptance let's look at the second chapter seventh verse of the bhagavad gita karpanya dushupahata swabhava prichhami tvam dharma sammudha cheta यछ्रेयस्या निश्चित ब्रूहित मे शिष्यस्ते हम शादी मां तां प्रपन्न नाउ आई एम कन्फ्यूज अबाउट माई ड्यूटी एंड हैव लॉस्ट ऑल कंपोजर बिकॉज ऑफ माइजरली वीकनेस इन दिस कंडीशन आई एम आस्किंग यू टू टेल मी फॉर सर्टन वॉट इज बेस्ट फॉर मी नाउ आई एम योर डिसाइपल एंड ए सोल सरेंडर्ड अन टू यू इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग दिस arjuna's situation at the beginning of the bat- you know of the battle of kurukshetra is completely overwhelmed overwhelmed in the sense that i have never really experienced such uh, you know you know overwhelming situation in my life definitely have been many overwhelming situations but arjuna's situation is something extraordinary also because arjuna is such a strong powerful kshatriya his ability was so strong that he had defeated powerful powerful warriors in the battle in in battles before kurukshetra the war of kurukshetra for a really strong person it is very difficult to admit that they have become weak the stronger you are the harder it is for you to admit that you have become weak in something and so when arjun accepts his weakness in front of krishna that is so revealing he puts himself in a vulnerable spot right in front of everyone right thousands of warriors have assembled and arjuna gives up his gandiva bow and because his compassion is actually making him think about others so also i was thinking if arjun being such a strong powerful kshatriya warrior can accept that he has become weak at least i can accept when my sadhana becomes weak one of the reasons sometimes we turn a blind eye shove it under the rug when our sadhana starts you know slipping away or our practices start slipping away we try to hide it from others uh, you know and sometimes one of the div- most difficult and you know questions to answer is when when another devotee asks us on a call so prabhu how is your sadhana and we have um uh, yes uh, yeah it is okay and then yeah it's okay it's not bad it's not the best either so at least to others it might be difficult to admit for whatever reasons but at least to ourselves if we accept that we have become weak then we can actually start looking for a solution until the point we ignore it there won't be any solution 
so and accepting that will allow us to make some lasting changes in our habits so that is why acceptance is such an important principle you know uh accepting to oneself and if possible accepting in front of another devotee that i have become weak maybe it allows us to seek help it allows us to seek help when it is needed the most and believe me it's such a powerful thing to really just admit in front of a devotee that hey you know i actually need to improve this you know maybe then i can try to do this just telling sharing that burden with someone gives so much strength and so much power so acceptance uh, we'll move to the next one nurture your aspirations in the association of those who have really strong sadhana uh, this connects with one of the keys which is sangha and which is why that key is important in spiritual life is that it nurtures your sadhana it nourishes your sadhana so we have to constantly nurture our aspirations by uh, you know being in the presence seeking constant association if not constant association some regular association if not regular association maybe once in a while maybe try to hear maybe try to talk to someone see what others are doing see how they are improving their lives see what are someone's strong points and try to inculcate them in our lives and also nurture your as aspirations by reading the prayers of the acharyas so many wonderful vaishnava prayers are simply talking about how they are not doing enough you know one of my favorite poems is written by shri bhakti vinod thakur the vaishnava song kabe habe bolo se dina mar when will that day be mine अपराध गुचि शुद्ध ना मेरुचि कृपा बले हबे हृदय संचार when will my offenses go away uh, when will uh, the shuddha na meruchi when will i really get taste in the pure chanting of the holy name right and these prayers can be a powerful tool to change our consciousness so we should seek inspiration from these prayers as well and the next point um, which brings us to the last one which is attention uh, be attentive to uh, what we are doing uh, throughout the day and during our sadhana time i got this thought as i was uh, working on trying to think about something else the other day but what i noticed is our life it becomes nothing but an aggregate of the little things we do repeatedly and consistently you know um i was actually meditating on how the impact social media has had on our young generation even on myself that one doesn't realize that one becomes a massive consumer of digital data mindlessly and it starts with such a small thing you know you just watch a small video you just look at a small thing and then keep scrolling keep scrolling keep scrolling and then you you know put a habit of you know reading those things be going before going to bed after waking up in between you know maybe if you get up to drink some water at night and by doing small small things constantly and consistently you become something pay attention to the things that we are doing you know to those small things we are doing constantly and consistently um what we do during our day throughout the day affects what we do during our sadhana time which is chanting what we do and think during our chanting affects what we do throughout the day and the more we are conscious of those things we take appropriate steps to do the right things because it's very easy to go wrong but it's very difficult to do the right thing so we have to be very attentive 
and if possible go back a couple of weeks a couple of months and listen to rup sagar prabhu's class on uh, attention uh, attentiveness it was a, a good talk and learn some key points from there uh, so we have to be very attentive right uh, the 10th offense to the holy name is to not have complete faith in the chanting of and to be an inattentive while chanting uh, we have a brahmachari in uh, in shri shri radha gopina temple and he is known for uh, chanting and uh, he chants 64 rounds every day very sincere uh, sadhaka kind of pers- person and gives really good uh, japa talks so he was saying and he is very jolly and uh, his uh, his sense of humor is pretty good so uh, he was saying and in in hindi he was saying that uh, ye daswa aparadh jo hai na isse atma ka khatma ho jata hai so this 10th offense will literally is the root of all other offenses uh, which is what he was implying in that so be attentive uh, and by being that uh we can actually have really good sadhana uh the last point which somehow doesn't fit into the acronym actually there are many more points about sadhana that can be talked about but this is something which is very important and uh, gorang prabhu back in back in the days when we i was in mumbai and uh, every time i would hear him he has he would emphasize this so much consistency uh again small things doing repeatedly over time uh, we we just you know uh, if we don't even realize that it becomes such a strong habit you know so let's create a positive habit let's create a strong positive habit right and we all just have to take baby steps towards it we only need to be consistent just being consistent with small baby steps is really powerful we don't really have to become hercules and you know become powerful lifters or something but we just have to take small small steps but consistent repeated steps and uh, we should see our sadhana as an investment uh, one of the principles of one way to invest at especially for people coming from middle class lower middle class family or you know for, or from any different background is that invest small but invest over a long period of time and let it build up so our sadhana is our investment it matures we we don't know when it will mature that's the interesting part of it but we have to keep investing because it is the returns are guaranteed you know the returns have been guaranteed by the vaishnava acharyas these are the most truthful honest people that have been on this planet so also to see that consistency is is that the power is not in the amount that we are investing but it is in the repeated repeated consistent uh, investment right so think of sadhana in that way and uh, that way it will be really uh, you know helpful because doing the same thing over and over and over again can sometimes become really challenging and the mind doesn't like it so thinking of it that way really helps and uh, we started the discussion with four keys sadhana seva sangha and kripa but why sadhana has been emphasized so strongly and what is it its uh, relation with the other keys right because uh, sometimes someone might say but prabhu i am already doing so many services you know devotional service prabhupad said devotional service so let me just do services day and night you know haven't i achieved the goal because if i am constantly engaged in services or uh, what if uh, i am constantly in the association of devotees right then my consciousness is already purified why do i really need to take up the bead bag and then chant for so long and you know so to understand that we have to see that sadhana is a direct communication with krishna which is a personal communication between you and krishna and 
and the Vaishnava Acharyas, the Guru Parampara. And it tells him directly about your intentions to connect with him. So over dependence on Seva and Sangha. Sadhana is an internal factor. Seva and Sangha are environmental factors. And Kripa is something which is completely not in our hand. But at least these three factors, so the internal factor has to be aligned with these external factors for a successful spiritual life. <clears throat> and because Seva and Sangha are such external factors, environmental factors, and we are in the material world, environment is in a constant state of flux. So is also Seva and Sangha. It can change. If we bank on simply Seva and simply Sangha for our spiritual progress, then we may not really, the success is not really 100% guaranteed. We need a combination of all these three things. In no way this means that Seva and Sangha are not important. In fact, our spiritual life begins with the Sangha, with association of devotees. But Sadhana has its key role and it's the most important pillar in that sense. Um, also try to think of sadhana as the anchor of our, of our ship, you know, and we have a long way to go. We have to sail in this turbulent waters of Kali Yuga and the turbulent waters of Kali Yuga will definitely, you know, affect our communities will affect our uh, services, but it is in our hand to throw the anchor to keep our boat stable and not drown. And that anchor is our sadhana. It will strongly keep us connected to Krishna. So to summarize, we talked about the need to sincerely strive, you know, sincerely strive to seek shelter little bit of austerity with detachment and determination, humility, acceptance, nur constantly nurturing our aspirations and attention. And then we also saw consistency. We saw why sadhana is such an important key to accessing um, the treasure box of uh, spiritual pleasure. So with that, uh, I will I will stop the presentation. I'll stop our discussion to open up the forum for comments, questions, corrections. So thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Kanagopal Prabhu, for that amazing, amazing class. As always, there's so much of pieces of nectar there that you shared. Um, at this time, devotees will open up for questions. Either you can post your questions in the chat, um, questions or comments, you can post them on the chat. Or if you want to use the raise hand feature so we know if any of you have questions, we can call on you. So can I go, Prabhu, I have one question, uh, can start with that maybe. You were talking about austerity, right? Um, how do we know when to draw the line between doing the right amount of austerity versus the fact that the austerity can take us away from our spiritual practice by itself? Well, I full, uh, fully don't have the maturity to answer the question so senior devotees can comment on that. Um, for me, austerity has always been about motivating myself uh, to make further progress. What seems difficult to make more progress. At the same time, while performing any austerity, I'm also very conscious of am I being strict with others. Um, so as I'd heard, I, I, I've heard this so many times that we should be strict with ourselves and lenient with others and accommodating with others. And we should be 
so but however we end up being strict with others and you know just accommodating our our own selves so you know what actually it's okay i'll try to do this some other day so so long as we are very vigilant about our own humility and uh, having a companion devotee or a devotee who can actually you know be there that is why all in the previous ages as things have changed a lot because of the way thing you know the society is in kali yuga uh, but being under the constant guidance of guru guru is the monitor right that hey you know this is where you have crossed the line this is where you haven't but having association of senior devotees a community as a good check and balance there what do you think mata ji uh, did you have some thoughts in mind no that is a great answer prabhu i where the where my question was coming from is sometimes um you know we get caught up in austerities i feel and we forget as you rightly said why we should be doing that austerity um i remember amrinder prabhu in one of the classes he had given here mentioning that point that you know our krishna ka our austerity is like japa like that's our biggest austerity and sometimes you know devotees take external austerities is nothing wrong in it and um but he was indicating the same point that you mentioned that we need to understand if the austerity is the austerity really helping me in my krishna consciousness or is the austerity holding me back um you know and I, if i i don't know if he had given that analogy but you you know many times you know devotees may take an austerity that i'm only going to eat once a day and that once a day i eat i will only eat vegetables that are yellow in color and then i will only you know like some, some and and devotees sometimes take that and he was questioning like it's fine but how much is it helping in your krishna consciousness so i like that point that you mentioned that whatever austerities we take big or small the question we need to ask ourselves is is this moving the yard in our krishna consciousness further if it's not then do we really need to take this austerity so i think i think that's a really good point yeah, thank, thank you, you. Uh, lalita madri you had a question yes hari krishna prabhu ji it was a really nice class thank you so much uh, my question was around when you were saying that um how we can associate with devotees who stra- st- uh, sadhana is very strong um to kind of enliven or uh, elevate ourselves um to come to that platform or level uh, but sometimes it can backfire also right prabhu ji like when you see uh, sometimes others doing a lot of sadhana um you might feel discouraged that oh my god i am like you know i'm nowhere and how is like you know how am i going to get there and i obviously don't have as much discipline as the other person has and it can completely backfire so how do you balance that like you know how do you pick the things that uh, from their sadhana or their discipline uh, that would fit in your um, you know what you can handle that's a that's a good good point mata ji um sometimes it can be like just the awe and reverence around a person who is known to be very straight about sadhana can be so much that we would fear like approaching such a person in that case i usually at least for myself i try to approach a person who is just like this maybe is at level 5 so maybe i'll try approaching a level 3 person you know and talk to that person because he is already at least i am approaching a person who is better than myself uh like they say if you are in if you are in a room where you are the smartest person in the room you are in the wrong room but if you are also surrounded by the smartest of the smartest of the smartest people it will completely discourage you so i think having an association we we know that okay this person is way out of my my range at least i can talk to this person whose standards are more achievable like in the short term maybe that might be the highest term and then talking about so that's one thing and point number 2 would be talking about the higher standard with the person who is at at least higher than me will give me a different perspective will give me a different perspective maybe it will give me a different sort of encouragement that i really need to come out of the level that i am at so i don't know if that makes sense mata ji it does help prabhu ji thank you so much thank you mata ji hari krishna thank you prabhu thank you madhvi thank you prabhu sir prabhu has a question uh hari krishna prabhu ji thank you very much for such an amazing and uh, practical class uh, 
I have a question regarding sadhana, Prabhuji. Like, uh, so you mentioned like everything in life uh, requires sadhana, whether you want to advance in your career or you want to uh, excel in sports and things like that. So as uh, practitioners of uh, bhakti, we we have to face all these challenges. And uh, on top of that, the bhakti also. That's where uh, the balancing thing comes. For everything else, I mean, we are so used to the instant results, instant gratification. So uh, if I like, really sincerely take a Java course, uh, I'll get a job or I get promotion. Uh, if I if I practice hard, I, I may uh, do my, uh, like uh, the sports properly. But bhakti, uh, like you said, it takes a lifelong, uh, lifetime practice. So uh, that's where uh, it becomes challenging, right? Uh, uh, we are so used to expecting results right away. Uh, so how do we, how do we uh, overcome that and still keep that faith and continue to practice repeatedly, as you mentioned? Uh, so how do we? What are some tips and tricks uh, to do that, Prabhuji? Oh, that's a great question, Prabhu. Um, uh, how I think about this is uh, looking at it as a lifetime of effort seems a little overwhelming sometimes. So seeing bhakti as a way of life sounds much better. Uh, it's just the way I will live. This is who I am from now on. But to reach that point, one really needs a lot of philosophical convincing. And that is why reading, hearing, associating, and the other keys of seva and sangha come into picture is that the times when we feel overwhelmed, we can actually bank on the sangha of devotees who are more advanced than us. So looking at it as a lifetime of exercise, okay, it's like, uh, you know, if someone hates, uh, you know, swimming, or maybe if someone hates uh, physical exercises or, you know, Aer aerobics or whatever and asking that person to do that thing every single day just as a matter of maybe say a doctor recommends someone who is super lazy to get up and take early morning walks it can be incredibly frustrating so if we look at it as if the doctor has recommended I have to do it I don't want to do it but I have to do it that is when it is frustrating but when that acceptance is already there, that this is my new life, this is the way I am now, it becomes much easier. You look forward for it afterwards. So the challenge becomes when we are, especially I've noticed in my own practice that when hearing, associating, it goes low, the desire for sadhana also goes low. So we are not that strong spiritual practitioners that we can drive drive it daily. So we need that all the time. And especially hearing. Hearing is such an important thing or reading. It is such an important thing because it constantly feeds our desire uh, to practice spiritual life. Because everything else in the material world is telling us to run the other way. Literally everyone is going this way and we are going that way. So if we look at it that way, it will be overwhelming. But if we accept that this is our life, this is our new life, then it will be better. If you have some thoughts, probably you could also share and devotees can also share points. Can I go, Prabhu, could I add one thing to this? Sure, sure, sure. Um, I, I feel personally another reason why sadhana bhakti or just sadhana in general seems very overwhelming is because of our desire for it to be perfect. So what happens is that you, you know, we feel, okay, I have to, today, I want to listen to one hour of class and this one hour of class I want to listen to, I want to be able to take notes and I want to do this. And, and then when you realize, oh, I don't have time to do it, we just, I'm just not going to do this, right? Um, and very often that happens even for chanting where, you know, there is, uh, especially in early stages and, you know, I know I was guilty of this for a long time. I still am sometimes it's like, if I don't have good japa, I wouldn't chant, I would not chant. So I'm like, oh, today is just a bad day, no point in chanting. But then you realize that the perfection in anything comes with action. So when we when we focus so much of sadhana bhakti in the state of perfection, we get frustrated because we're not hitting our ideal, right? So if you have a goal to read X amount of pages of Srimad Bhagavatam every day, you don't get to that for whatever reason. And you get so frustrated, it, and then it puts you off reading Bhagavatam versus actually understanding that, okay, hey, 
maybe maybe my i have to adjust my vision maybe i can't do this perfectly so what is the min, uh, you know to use like a corporate thing if what's my minimum viable product what is the least i can do that i'm moving forward in my sadhana but it is not getting like and i keep checking balance and it's like moving slightly out of the comfort zone so i've kind of found very often that we get stuck in that perfection trap that i want to be perfect and when you can't be perfect you're just not going to do it at all versus it's okay if it's imperfect i rather do this imperfectly than do it perfectly and not do it at all that was a really practical point mata ji thank you Oh, thank you so much, uh, Prabhu Ji and Mata Ji, for such practical and complete answers. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Good question. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I have just one question, Mata Ji. So, thank you so much, Prabhu Ji, for your class and uh, <clears throat> nice questions from all the devotees. I really get to uh, get to learn from all those questions and answer. But uh, one thing I just wanted to ask, Prabhuji, during a consistency section, you mentioned like you know we should take small steps, baby steps, and slowly you know develop. But you know, like a person like me, you know, who started almost you uh, know Krishna conscious, almost half of the life is gone. If if I get a chance to live another half of the life, which is again there is no guarantee. So I mean, see, each day, you know, we are getting closer to the death. You know, that's you know, in fact, you know, the real reality. so we think sometimes let's take you no know, baby step one by one uh, and at the same time it, it comes in mind oh my god like you know we are we are already so old you know we are getting so close so this kind of sometimes you know that hariness comes up, you know or some kind of fear comes so how can we avoid the fear at the same time we can do with the same, the the great amount of love whatever the life we have thank you prabhu yes probably i'm i'm trying to understand your your question um prabhu i have seen you personally i don't feel you need to worry too much uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh so but indeed it is a practical concern uh, because who knows like what is a person's age it's the time between right now and a person's death you know like you know how, how old is how are you you can never really know how old one is by their age You, you how old one is should be just based on how much time one has so that's that's a good question and a concern to have and i personally feel that the thought that you have will actually drive you to increase your own spiritual practices so it's a good thought to have to think that hey i am not doing enough but being afraid of that will actually put you in a negative loop because you will constantly be dissatisfied with what you are doing uh, just as uh, mahasundari mata ji was mentioning expectations that in your mind there is a certain expectation that i should already be up at this level but no that is not how spiritual life works spiritual life is neha vikramana shosti pratyavayo na vidyate svalpa mukpyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat even little progress that we make in spiritual life is never lost one simply picks up where one left off you know so to understand it that way that whatever little pre- progress i am making right now is my benefit only it's not an investment that will be lost this is a permanent bank prabhu so spiritual uh, banks investment is never lost how much ever we invest right now is only going to be our benefit and if we look at it that way that brings in some positivity so being fearful of where we are and also that's one thing and also everyone comes into the you know bhakti sadhana bhakti at different stages of their life like my father my parents they are almost into their you know into their late 50s or you know 40s 50s when we all became you know uh, devotees or tried to start becoming devotees but wherever we are now that we have got it taking those baby steps will be very powerful is something that we need to understand at the same time our steps also shouldn't be so small that we never really make any progress at all it's like uh, if you want to wake up early so at least push the clock 30 minutes before you are getting up right say if you are getting up at 8 am or say someone is getting up at 10 am 
at least get up at 9:30 or 9 am you know so those are the practical things that we need to consider so if we are chanting one round maybe you know for 2020 make a resolution to increase your rounds by at least two you know or at least uh, come up to chanting four rounds it's only 30 minutes and we are not at all talking about standing on the top of a mountain on one hand and focusing your mind on breathing and giving up all society relatives family nothing just we just have to add krishna so in that way it's not too overwhelming also that our baby steps are simple small uh, practical and uh, you know that way there should be like also no fear about whatever we are adding is good and uh, you know personally i believe in that philosophy as much as i can do i don't know if that helps but uh, devotee is please sir sure, prabhu ji yes sir sure. so thank you so much wow. prabhu ji i think that surely gives some you know inspiration thank you thank you for your insight thank you prabhu i would like to add something if it's sure, okay sure mataji sure so um in my understanding krishna consciousness is the shift in your consciousness so somebody can go back to godhead in a fraction of second of devotion where the consciousness is completely shifted towards krishna or somebody can take lifetimes so baby steps are encouraged also in bhagavad gita so it is more sustainable we have given a procedure of sadhana so that we can engage our different senses um in krishna consciousness um that way we can start detaching slowly slowly uh from material desires and material attachments and slowly slowly attach ourselves to krishna so that is the idea behind our sadhana and the principles and regulations that are given to us but as long as we understand that shift is happening within our heart we are okay prabhu ji so just two cents i wanted to add thank you prabhu ji Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, is it not that uh, we kind of start out with uh, high expectation because we are uh, in the material life? That is what we do. and so when we get into sadhana and spiritual life we automatically expect some high expectation but it doesn't work that way we have to be very patient and um, so can you add something to that i think uh, you you didn't mention uh, that in your point itself prabhu um patience so i think radha gopinath prabhu was mentioning um, one thing utsahat nischayat dhairyat like these are the principles given to us utsahat is enthusiasm nischayat is determination and dhairyat is patience so you know when one is new in krishna consciousness when one is young and you know young in terms of the entry into krishna consciousness is i am going to make the world a pure devotee i am going to be the best devotee i am going to be the best chanter i am going to be the best singer or how that's how the train begins for a lot of us so simply enthusiasm without patience is restlessness and uh, simply patience without enthusiasm is laziness so we have to strike a balance between both and striking a balance uh can be achieved by looking at real mature examples of krishna consciousness i think you yourself are a really good example of that prabhu so it's really humble of you to ask that question but uh having that understanding that both are needed so having too high expectations is how it starts in the beginning it's okay but when we really understand of where we are that is why acceptance was necessary is like okay i thought i could do this i thought i could be this way i thought i could be chanting these many rounds by now but i am not i am not there and then once one accepts okay i think i can do this much now one can seek help just like arjun did he sought help from krishna 
please instruct me so that's how i think it can work thank you very much uh, prabhu it's a very nice uh, enlightening class you 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 mentioned so many points that uh, uh, i need to work on it's really very nice of you to uh, give all those points thank you so much oh thank you prabhu personally for us for myself and pal you are a big inspiration of strong sadhana so thank you can i go over can i go pal prabhu what you had said earlier about uh, with, you know by krishna bhai prabhu because the question was so fantastic there was a realization that i had about it again personally like i could see that happening to myself is because we're so used to the material world pushing us more and more it's such a result driven society that when we become devotees also we are looking for results right and it's a subconscious thing we may not realize it but that is why we get frustrated i've been chanting for so many years what is the end product like why can i not see the result but actually that you know jai madhi very beautifully said krishna consciousness is a shift in our consciousness i think it's a shift in perspective that the material world is tell is very result oriented but krishna consciousness is very action oriented we are not we're not concerned about our result we're only concerned about our action so the more we focus on the action part of it which is actually doing the doing this doing the duty whatever we can do and not worry about the result as much then it becomes easier then there is no question of being overwhelmed because you just enjoy the activity by itself right uh, you know so many times it happens like when you cook prasadam like sometimes the outcome is not good you may feel a little bad or the you know i tried to make this cake today the cake kind of fell flat perfectly justified but then you step back a moment to see did i actually have fun cooking today if the answer is yes i did then that was it takes a higher principle than necessary not getting the right result because the action is more important so i think that's a very important change in perspective and krishna encourages that in the gita as well because arjuna is clearly very result driven right he's like I'm not going to get this. I'm not going to get this. I'm not going to get this. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen if I fight. And Krishna is like, "What do you? That's that's step step away from that. That's not your point of focus. Focus on doing the action, not what the outcome is." So I think that's a big thing for us in Krishna consciousness is a good barometer for us. And I know personally for myself, it's a question I ask: Is am I doing this for the result or am I doing this for the action itself? Um, and it's the more we remind ourselves, I think it helps us get out of this trap where we are expecting results or getting frustrated or overwhelmed or stressed out because it's the result is what we are looking for not the action the action should never be stressful reading shrimad bhagavatam should never be stressful for you if you are expecting a result from reading shrimad bhagavatam of course that's going to be stressful so it's it flips the equation a little bit so i think i cut vaman hari prabhu prabhu you were going to share something hari krishna uh, can i go for prabhu uh, follow up on tara chandra prabhu's question uh there is a little difference when i started taking baby steps i started taking baby steps most before most of you were babies i'm still taking baby steps and uh, sometimes i feel okay maybe i'll come back as a baby and start attending the uh, gopal with the classes and all that I don't. I don't know where I'm going or how. This nishchaya, the drudar nishchaya, and uh, patience and uh, all those things. Maybe I'm lacking at some point, some step, or some link is not there. That's why I'm not started running. Still taking baby steps. I heard one of the acharyas when the baby start taking baby steps, we feel very happy. but if the baby still start we're going to taking only baby steps after 4 5 years and then we get worried we take the baby to the doctor he is not walking he is not running like he should for the appropriate age so i'm in that boat maybe someone can enlighten me hare krishna prabhu ji it is like when it's a marathon you don't run too fast but you run consistently and you finish strong i think you yourself vaikunteshwar balaji prabhu you are all our seniors you are big marathon runners so marathon runners don't sprint too hard they just keep going on so it's just your modesty and humility that you are asking this question but i feel in no way qualified to answer what you have said 
and I also don't feel that you are in any way doing baby steps. Other devotees can please add to this. If I may add something uh, regarding the baby steps that reminds me of the story of the uh, race between the hare and the tortoise. And uh, tortoise was, you know, going very slowly but consistently and he made the race while uh, the rabbit or the hare was uh, a little bit of proud of himself and uh, didn't make it. So baby steps slowly and gradually will win the race. Okay, I just saw a question. Harita Mataji is asking about three qualities, what they mean and when they are not working in tandem. Oh, enthusiasm without patience is restlessness and patience without enthusiasm will simply become laziness. So we need, we need to balance all of those three together and determination is always needed. I don't know, Harita Mataji, is, was that what you were asking? Yes, yes, I was. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, that's a nice equation, Mataji. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. If I put E minus P equals to R, it's too complicated. <laughs> so <that's laughs> we know what they stand for. Chai, any other questions or comments? Wonderful. To me, a mark of a great class is when the question answers are uh, as lively as the class itself, because that's an indication of such amazing points that you covered. Can I go, Paul Prabhu? Thank you again so much for uh, the wonderful class and uh, taking us through not one, but many verses of the Bhagavad Gita and helping us appreciate this ancient text and giving us our keys to bhakti. So now, devotees, if you ever feel like you've lost your keys, um, it, it, well, not any keys, but definitely your keys to bhakti, you know whom to ask because, you know, Prabhu has some of the keys and uh, hopefully we have all been able to take some of these keys and apply it in our life as well. Thank you so much. Can I go back, Prabhu? Um, I'm gonna, we're going to quickly go through some announcements here. While you're sharing, Mataji, just thank you. I'm just very grateful and humbled to be able to share these points. Nothing, as I said, I've only heard these things. And I'm trying to practice. So thank you very much. With all your blessings, maybe I'll be able to practice these things perfectly one day. Hare Krishna. Um, so again, thank you to everyone for participating in our Sunday feast today. We thank Kanai Gopal Prabhu for that excellent class. Uh, and we hope everyone was able to take a lot of information from it. If you were unable to capture the notes because Prabhu's class was so fantastic, recommend everyone, please listen to the class again on uh, YouTube and on uh, on Facebook, wherever.